Welcome to The Exchange, the program that explores everyday issues that affect us. Throughout the program, we'll be exchanging many ideas with leaders in their respective fields. I'm Rob Buckingham, and my co-host on The Exchange is my wife, Christy. I'm going to love today's show. Yeah, me too. We're, we're going to be discussing what makes people happy, and we'll also look at the pursuit of happiness, whether it should be a goal or a mindset, and whether the pursuit itself has a potential to make you unhappy. To discuss this topic, we're delighted to be joined by Dr. Russ Harris, who's a psychotherapist and the author of the bestseller, The Happiness Trap. Welcome, Russ. Hi, thanks Welcome. for having me. It's great to have you. We're also excited to be joined by Anna Box, a consulting psychologist who focuses on thriving in both people and brands. She was a partner at one of Australia's leading brand consumer research agencies and now is a consultant at the AFL Players Association. Welcome, Anna. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That's great. Looking forward to today's topic. But before we get on with it, let's take a look at this. What makes you happy? Great friends, a new car, or the latest fashion. They might make you happy, but what about hard work, commitment, or responsibility? We all want to be happy, but is it possible to be happy 100% of the time? Is the pursuit of happiness setting us up for a fall? I'm just feeling really happy about doing this program today. Well, that's good. I'm glad you're happy. Yeah. Russ, tell us, how would you define happiness? Well. How I'd like to people to think of happiness is living a rich, full and meaningful life in which you feel the full range of human emotions. But how most people think of happiness is feeling good. Most people, it's a good feeling. The Macquarie Dictionary defines it as a state of pleasure or contentment. And if that's your notion of happiness, you're going to be struggling with reality. Yeah, big great time. point. Great yeah. point. And what about you, Anna? How would you define it? Yes, similarly. So I think it's about meaning and purpose and sort of just being in touch with, you know, what sort of lights you up and then accepting everything that comes with that. Yeah. Mm. So it's, what, it's what tricky. Are, what are the typical things that people look to for happiness, Russ? Well, if, <laughs> again, it depends on, on how they're defining happiness. So the, the conventional notion that happiness is feeling good, people do things that make them feel good. And, and that might be food or it might be their hobby or it might be spending time with their friends or it might be watching their favourite telly programmes. Um, uh, it might be, you know, taking care of themselves. I mean, there's a there's a hundred thousand different ways sure. of, of making yourself feel good. Mm. But that's very different to what we're talking about, this idea of creating a richer, fuller, more meaningful life. And if, if people are, are looking at happiness in that sense, then they're going to do things that are more challenging, building a career or developing a spiritual path or mm. building rich, intimate relationships. And of course, those things don't just give you good feelings, right? Yeah, no. Grabbing the light and shade that comes with, yeah. you know, with, with all of so, it. So I think I'm hearing you both say we actually need to redefine happiness. Big time. Yeah. And, that, and that's Absolutely. what you're spending your life doing at the, at the moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it, exactly. You know, it's like I, I'm enjoying doing this thing right now. And I'm also feeling really anxious about it. You know, I've got a racing car and <laughs> my hands, surprisingly, are not sweaty. They've kind of gone cold and white. But, <laughs> but you know... That's it, the weather. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's like this is an enjoyable, exciting thing and it brings some anxiety with yeah. it. And yes. if you, the most meaningful things in life will bring some painful emotions, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, the pancake. There's always a flip side. So you've got to sort of, yeah, make room for it and embrace them both and push forward. So what you're saying then is that like, if we're only looking for happy feelings, we're actually setting ourselves up for disappointment. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 I mean, the yeah. things that make life richful and meaningful don't just give you pleasant feelings, right? Mm. Like any parent, or any of you folks' parents? Yep. You kind yes. of, yeah. 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 So, you know, having kids uh, fills your life with meaning and purpose, gives you some of those wonderful feelings you'll ever have in your life. Mm. And whatever feelings does it give you? Some dreadful feelings. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Right. You feel totally overwhelmed yeah. sometimes. Frustration. Yeah. Guilt. Frustration. Guilt, anxiety, rage. You know, yeah. I didn't know what rage was until yeah. I became a parent. You know, it's like. That's all the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's what makes it, you know you're alive. You yeah. know? My mother always raised me. Whenever I was upset, she never used to hug me and say, you'll be okay. She used to always hug me and say, you know you're alive. And right. I just think that's amazing insight, you know. It was before Russ wrote his book, yeah. so I don't know how she knew that. <laughs> I love that. I love <laughs> yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, so wow. it's, it's, it's the full gauntlet, you know. It's yep. taking everything that, that life throws at you. So are we saying then that we should actually be trying to encourage people not to seek, not to pursue happiness in the conventional way of it, but rather to seek more contentment? Or is it a bigger picture? How, how, what are we... I think it's about pursuing all of it. So, uh, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with, with seeking out 
you know, things that bring pleasure and things that bring joy. It's just understanding that, that you know, there's, there's a shadow side and, and that you can't have it all one way. So you're certainly um, not anti-happiness. I'm certainly not anti-happiness. Mm. Um, but there's a difference between sort of a, a, a brief feeling of happiness and a, and, a, and a sort of enduring happiness or an underlying kind of contentment. And that comes more mm. from, from the meaning and, and from, you know, the purpose that, that life brings. Yeah, in That's my opinion. Good. Yeah. No, I, I would largely agree with that. You know, it's yeah. kind of, I, I like to say to people that if you're going to live a full human life, you're mm. going to feel the full range of human emotions, not mm. just the ones that feel good. So mm. that Bobby. So, what's his name? Bobby McFerrin. McFerrin. Yeah, I was going to say Bobby Derrick. You know that song. You know, uh, don't worry, be happy is yeah. so unrealistic. You know, yeah. think of the the best day of your life. How long did a, a feeling of happiness last before the last before there was some frustration or disappointment? Yeah. So you know, seek those things by all means, but let go of this idea that happiness equals feeling good, mm. and start thinking about happiness is is living a meaningful, purposeful life and engaging in the present moment and allowing yourself to have whatever that brings, which might be a whole range of different feelings. Yeah, absolutely. I imagine yeah. uh, with Bobby McFerrin that he was just kind of humming that as he was walking away with his royalty check. <laughs> <laughs> And Number one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> do, 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 do. yeah, that was the knots he was pointing at the end. <laughs> well, I, mean, no, I mean, coming back to your point about yeah. chasing happiness, that, you know, the, the more you think I've got to feel good and the more you go chasing good feelings, the more misery that actually creates for you. If you kind of, you know, it's like, okay, don't, don't be anti that, but it's, I've got to feel good, I've got to feel good, I mustn't feel bad, I've got to get rid of my bad feelings. You start to develop something yes. called experiential avoidance. Is it okay to use a jargon word here? Absolutely, because yep. okay. I now know it because I've been to one of your <laughs> seminars. <laughs> so experiential avoidance then is the ongoing attempt to avoid or get rid of painful feelings. And what research shows is that the higher level of experiential avoidance, and we're, and we're all avoidant to some degree, I don't know mm. anyone who loves painful feelings, but the more you go through life trying to avoid painful feelings, the greater your risk of depression, anxiety mm. disorders, addiction, development post-traumatic disorder after a life-threatening event and so on and so on about 25% reduction in performance in the workplace for people who are high in experiential avoidance and so forth mm -hmm. so this thing about I've got to feel good unfortunately translates into I mustn't feel bad which then has all sorts of, of knock-on effects well wow, yeah. it's fascinating so they're yeah. only looking for good feelings and and pain then becomes an enemy That's yeah right. yeah rather yeah, than a dangerous dangerous place to be. Let's talk about from your marketing background, yeah, Anna, sure. yeah. um, and advertisers, how they yeah. pitch at us yes. with the feel good, <laughs> this will make you happy message. Yeah, well, it's interesting, I guess, because uh, the buying and selling of products and services has been around, you know, since, since Adam was a boy. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, and sophisticated brands more and more are really tapping into the same kinds of values that, that psychotherapists are helping to tap into. So you've got some brands that overtly go there, Cadbury and, and, and Disney and um, Coca-Cola kind of sell, literally Feel package good. up and sell happiness. Yeah. You know, it's Cadbury-ness is happiness and, and reading stories to your kids and it's, you know, they lived happily ever after and, you know, the pursuit of happiness is in the American, you know, is, is what America's sort of based on. Yeah. So it's, um, it's interesting, but brands more and more are really about... Um, committing to their own values and portraying those values and 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 therefore you bring the right people into that brand and it's really about building communities so you know it's not all a bad thing so um, you know Tupperware aren't really flogging plastic you have a Tupperware party because you want to connect and, and you know so that's about connection and engagement and sort of you know having some fun and you know it's you've got to think about what they're really what they're really selling I guess and I don't think it's dangerous unless you're tapping into someone else's values and not your own. I think you need to be really aware of what your own values are and not taking on what society suggests your values should be. I guess as well be. as tying that into what you said before, Russ, is, is you know, making uh, or trying to live a pain-free existence. And so that, you know, I mean, chocolate is lovely and it makes you happy and all of that. As but long as it's single origin <laughs> and fair trade. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. But if, you, if that's your default yeah. when you're going through pain and then you eat, you know, <laughs> copious quantities of yes, it. Yes, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. 
Well, you know, that, that used to be my default. So like 20 years ago when I was working as a GP, I, was, uh, I didn't know how to handle my anxiety back then. Uh, uh, and I experienced a lot of anxiety. And back then, that was the main way I handled mm. it. I was mm. bit by eating chocolate. And wow. I, on a bad day, I could literally get through five packets of Tim Tams. No problem. That's amazing. I've never uh, met a man who loves chocolate. <laughs> you are a very nice well, individual. I was 30 then, kilograms heavier back then. Wow. You and that know, wasn't uh, heavy. Uh, yeah. I was in my mid-20s. I had high blood pressure. And... and and so we could say at that point, well, that just went too far. Yep. A little bit of chocolate now and again, not a problem. Five, ten packets of Tim Tams a day, that's a problem. That's but experiential these, avoidance, yeah. as you were talking about. So we could before. say these days you wouldn't have a bar of it. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we'll go to a break. That's we'll a be back soon swallow. with more discussion <laughs> on The Exchange. <laughs> Welcome back to The Exchange. We're having a great discussion with Dr. Russ Harris and Anna Box about the pursuit of happiness. And we are actually very happy right we now, are. aren't we? We're it's enjoying this. Happy. We are enjoying this. So, Russ, you wrote the book, um, The Happiness Trap. Do you actually think that Westerners have more of an issue with unhappiness than people say in developing countries? Or do you think it's well, universal? There's some interesting research on that. Um, by a guy called Robert Biswasdina, who went all around the world measuring happiness levels. He's American. <laughs> and so he went to poor people in the slums of Calcutta, and he expected them to be saying, oh, you know, you, uh, we're so envious of you. You know, you live in America and you have all these great things. And they actually felt sorry for him. Mm -hmm. And when he measured their happiness levels, they were actually happier than middle class people in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, and they were the first to say, they would tell you the problems, look, there's sewerage here and there's not very good food and there's lots of disease. But they had religion and spirituality and community and incredible friends and family and networks. And so their happiness levels were actually better, even though, you know, folks in Florida had lovely sewerage and big houses and lots of food and so forth. That's interesting. So, uh, and I think, you know, the more what the West gets obsessed with this idea of happiness and equates that to feeling good, mm. the more miserable we're going to get you know we can yeah. see depression is going up and up and up and up and up it's uh, it's now the second biggest disease burden in the world and a lot of it is because if i'm not feeling good there's something wrong with me oh yeah. what's wrong with me and i've got to make these feelings go away and and you get in this vicious cycle and this experiential avoidance stuff comes in which is probably the single biggest factor in depression mm, yeah. very Anna, interesting. what would you add to that yeah well it, it's pretty much been covered there but absolutely it's around expectation i mean i think there's a bit more of an expectation in the west that um, you know, life's supposed to run relatively smoothly and we're not supposed to experience pain and suffering and, and all, all these terrible things that we hear about might happen to somebody else but they're not going to happen to me. So the rug's pulled out from underneath us if and when it does. So mm. um, I think the expectations are different and, and in areas where you see people, you know, facing day-to-day -day realities of, of life and, and therefore kind of embracing all of that and all, of the, all that that brings. You know, they, they, they experience the lot so they're... Mm. You know, so they're sort of more content underneath it all. Yeah. The expectations aren't the same. I mean, you, you mentioned something earlier about you were enjoying this process, but you also had physical feelings of anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I mean, people look at us doing this and they think uh, it's just you know it's okay for you saying it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. But we also experience some of those things. And Anna, you would you know dealing with AFL football players going out into the field, eighty thousand viewers. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, so it's the pursuit of a of a bigger goal. It's it, you know, it's it's a it's something that they value and it's something that they cherish and it's an opportunity that they've got and you know it's not for everyone and um, but but while they while they're there while they're doing that while they have that opportunity, it's absolutely about taking all of it. You know, you yeah. take the pain, you take you know the, the difficulties that come with it. You take the highs, you take the lows, and, and yeah. they sort of you know run the gauntlet of. Of all well, the different emotions, huge that come stress with levels, that. right? Huge stress. Yeah, yeah. yeah cause Performance significant stress anxiety, levels and yeah. all of that. Okay, Physical you've heard pain. from our experts. Let's take a look at what the people have to say. Tell me, what do you believe are the secrets to happiness? Family, um, and family. You have to have a good family. I think family is a big factor. Um, I think that love. Yeah, um, and support. Things that money can't buy, I think. Um, love, relationships with family and friends and all that stuff, yeah. Um, just enjoy life and just don't stress about things and just just take it as it comes. Uh, good friends, maybe, yeah. Having a faith 
in God. Um, meditation. Um, having great support work, like a really good supportive family and really good friends. Oh, not taking yourself too seriously. Love, health. Yeah, probably, yeah, that's it. Yeah, contentment, peace. Being yourself and doing what you want to do and just not letting anyone get in your way of your happiness. The recent study that said to be happy, you need to have a meaningful relationship, $100,000, and have a, a hobby. Would you agree with that? I'd say a hobby and I'd say family, but $100,000 is largely irrelevant. So money doesn't come into the equation? It all depends where you live, doesn't it? $100,000 is nothing if you want a Porsche. That would certainly help, but no, money isn't everything. Money can't buy everything. It, it certainly can't buy happiness. Um, I think love can be, can, love probably is a good part of that study, but yeah, with, with money, no, money can't buy happiness. No, I'd, I'd probably agree with half of it about hobbies and stuff like that. Um, the money part, not so much, because there are a lot of things that you can do without $100,000, yeah. I don't agree with that. Money doesn't buy you happiness. Uh, not necessarily. I think you can have $100,000 and still be miserable. I don't know about that. I think there's plenty of people out there who don't necessarily have those things who are still pretty happy. I think meaningful relationships are very important, but it doesn't mean you have to have meaningful relationship with um, uh, for example, a man or a woman. I think you can have lots of friends and uh, if they are meaningful, then that can bring a lot of happiness. you just got to create your own happiness. That's what it's all about. Well, some very interesting opinions there. Joining us now is our Street Talk reporter, Sandra Cavallo. Hi, how yeah. are you? Great, happy, enjoying happy, this. So enjoying this. Um, Bella, tell us, is there anything out there that you were surprised about? Yeah, I was a bit surprised about the whole money not buying happiness and I, it was interesting because I, I felt like if I was in one of those countries like Calcutta and it was interesting hearing what you had to say about that. But if people had absolutely no money, um, does that make you... I actually question whether it would make you happy because money does bring opportunities your way, I would think. Not that you should be pursuing it. So I just thought that was an interesting response. Mm. Mm. I don't know. How would you it? interact with that, Anna? Well, I think... Money, the idea of money buying happiness is sort of a direct relationship. Is it just seems sort of flippant and it sounds a bit shallow. So I think there's a, there's a part of us that wants to sort of suppress that idea. But but money can bring choices and choices can reduce stress and and you know and and limit you know having less stress you know less high levels of stress can be a nicer way to live at times. So mm. yeah, there's, it's definitely a relationship there. But I think Rob was interesting was saying earlier that he you know you're sort of better off being unhappy and rich than unhappy and poor, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah. so, so Russ, are, we, are we saying yeah. that reducing stress then is the goal? Because what if we can't? What if we're living in a situation where we've got a chronic illness or something like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, most of the people there mention family and love. Mm -hmm. Those things bring stresses with them. Yeah, family get-togethers yes. are incredibly yes. stressful. Yes. Having yes. kids yes. is it's stressful. Crazy. Stress, yes. you need stress. And there's two types of stress. There's you stress, which is kind of stress that moves you in a positive life enhancing direction and there's distress which is uh, kind of painful stress and um, unfortunately even those terms are misleading because painful stress is often really life enhancing too mm -hmm. so there's this whole kind of culture out there that equates stress as bad mm -hmm. and you know it's like like you but, we were talking before that mm. how do you feel before you start filming a series? I always feel anxious mm. um, and if I could find a way of getting out of it I would yeah. <laughs> and yet once I actually start I'm fine I get into mm. the flow of and it and I love it, it. I love it really yeah. enjoy it and isn't that but the yeah. case for any kind of meaningful life project yeah. brings stress brings anxiety so if we start saying anxiety is bad stress yeah. is bad we don't do anything no. or That's we right. struggle with it yeah. Yeah. most of the people though seem to value relationships mm. and um, family so yeah. is would you say that's a good thing I think mm. relationships are incredibly important yeah connections yeah. known to be one of the sort of key drivers to, to well-being mm. so there's certain things you know giving to other people you know connecting tuning into your environment in the present moment 
um, you know, movement, keep, you know, keeping moving and to continue learning, to sort of keep mm. the mind going. Yeah. You know, there's sort of five key behaviours that are really simple to embed in everyday practices that really contribute yes. to that underlying sense of wellbeing. But that's not about happiness. You know, learning can be stressful. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. connecting and giving can be time consuming and we all think we're too busy. So, mm. you know, they bring a shadow side, but they're really important. Yeah, yeah. and in, you know, I often say to you, like, love and pain are intimate dance partners. Yeah. You, you don't get one without the other, yeah. right? Mm. You know, yeah, so, so true. So so true. Yeah. Sandra, thanks for popping in today. Thank you. Thank That's you. great. We're uh, going to take a break and we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to The Exchange. We're talking with Dr Russ Harris, the author of The Happiness Trap, and consulting psychologist Anna Box about whether the pursuit of happiness is bound to make you unhappy. Yeah, and your book is based on ACT. Can you just give us a little bit of uh, an idea yeah. of what, what that actually is? is? Yeah. So yeah. ACT stands for Acceptance and Commitment Therapy, and so it's a scientifically based model, comes out of America that's a, a way of dealing with painful thoughts and feelings and finding meaning and purpose in life. And it's uh, oh, well over a hundred studies published in psychology journals now showing its effectiveness with everything from depression and anxiety to weight loss and smoking to workplace performance. Um, very popular approach. I can't tell you which teams won't tell you there are now two AFL teams where the players are all kind of training in that because it is such a, uh, a, a kind of stressful you know, business running mm -hmm. out onto the pitch. So it's really, it, ACT is based on three principles. One is finding meaning and purpose through clarifying your values. You saw people in the Vox Pops there talking about yeah. family. What are the values you want to live by? The second element is um, learning uh, mindfulness skills to handle difficult thoughts and feelings as we've been saying life brings plenty of pain so learning skills to kind of let those painful feelings flow through you without getting swept away by them but without getting into a fight with them without getting mm -hmm. overwhelmed by them just letting them flow and the third strand is learning how to engage in the present moment put your full attention into what you're doing right here right now if you want to be successful at anything whether it's being a parent or making love or cooking dinner or playing football whatever you need to keep your attention engaged in what you're doing and so those kind of three principles principles come together in this model and the acceptance of uh, acceptance and commitment therapy that the message is accept what's out of your personal control and commit to action that improves your life. Mm. Mm, it's great. Do you, you use that at all in what you do? Yeah absolutely do? yeah um, I'm a sort of big follower of ACT yes. and I've been practicing ACT for quite a few years now and it's great and it's you know, it, it resonates in, in all sorts of areas and it, and it flows through in things like brands as well, which sort of sounds a little bit counterintuitive when you first say that. But, um, but the idea of, of, you know, committing to behaviours that serve your values, um, regardless of whether or not that brings some pain or, or joy with it, is, um, you know, is, is really what life's about. And finding yeah. brands that serve your values, you know, yeah. like, you know, if there's yeah. a brand that says this is fair trade, you know, yes. coffee or fair trade chocolate, yeah. you know, uh, or if this is a green environment or a brand with a great yeah. message like Nike, you know, just do yeah. it and so forth. Yeah. yeah. There's an old metaphor that, you know, consumers don't want drills. They want holes, you know. So, you know, 10 years ago, brands were out there selling drills and saying this is a drill and it can do this and it can do that. And that's not how you speak to consumers anymore. So now you speak to the hole and what the hole brings for them. So is that about photos up on the wall? Is that about building a cubby house for your kids? Is, you know, is that about bringing colour into your, into your world? So you really so talk... Outcome. Yeah, you really talk mm. to, to the values that the consumers have and that brings the right people into your brand, leaves the, those that aren't interested out, which is fine. You don't need to sort of speak to everyone. And it's, um, it's it, you know, speaking and communicating through values is, is really an effective way to go about, yeah. you know, cutting yeah. through. Yeah, absolutely yeah. brilliant. Well, I'm reading The Happiness Trap mm. at the moment and I'm absolutely loving it. You've and read the book. Are you reading the you've... cartoon version? No, I'm Because reading. the cartoon version is fantastic. <laughs> it is, it's great. Yep. You're reading the real book. I'm reading the real one, uh, yes. <laughs> I've been to the seminar. Yeah. I haven't got the T-shirt, but loved it. But it's really yeah. good. Russ Harris and Anna Box, thank you so much thank for your time. You. Yeah. Been Thanks. really Thanks. valuable. Thank you for watching as well. Please go to our website for a fact sheet as well as more information about this show, The Exchange. We look forward to seeing you next time. See you then. Mm -hmm.